it's really unprecedented in modern history to have an administration or someone running for office to be this corrupt. Uh, and now we know the FBI was ordered to tell the press to not uh, report on this or not film it or tape it when she met with him last week uh, there at the airport in this James Bond-style villain rendezvous. And, of course, they got caught lying about that. And, and this is while Clinton, Hillary Clinton, and Bill are both under criminal uh, investigation for the foundation, not just, not just the emails. And so what is their game plan? Because the media is saying that Lynch said she's going to take what the FBI said and do it. No, she said she's going to look at it, then she'll make the final decision. That's what she actually said. We're going to be playing that later. And, of course, Bloomberg's also reporting that they talked to DOJ folks that say that's the case. So this is a big deal. Uh, decipher this for us, Larry Nichols. You used to run these type of operations for them. What's really going on? What does all this mean? Well, Alex, what it's all about is they, they had to meet to get their deal worked out. And as I told you in the segment Friday, I think they made three deals. Number one, Bill Clinton assured Lynch that if Hillary was elected, she'd get to keep her job, number one. Number two, she made it clear to Lynch, they handed, I'll bet you he handed her a piece of paper, and in that piece of paper was information on a couple of the prosecutors showing that they had stuff on them, that if the indictment is dropped and it goes away, but if any of those prosecutors decide to come out and talk about it, and tell the truth, they're letting them know they'll be destroyed. And then the third thing is they are working out their arrangement with Lynch to stop conservative, moral Christian people from coming out and, you know, and rioting and posing, you know, protest and such like that. And to have her indict probably a half a dozen of those people, and that will shut it down. Well, you're the man to know, and you've been so accurate in the past. My concern is she's actually was saying a few months ago she might arrest people that criticize Muslims, and then she had to backtrack, and she says she wants to censor talk radio. This woman's even more monstrous than Eric Holder. You know, Alex, it's been their goal. You know it. It's been their goal to get rid of this, the First Amendment, to stop the freedom of the speech. And they're going to do it this time. You know, Alex, you and I have talked about it, and I am more confident than ever. This is the last election we're going to have. So, Larry Nichols, lay this out for us where you think this is all going. <clears throat> well, Alex, relative to it being the last election, let's figure this out for ourselves. And I want your audience to be able to justify this as they tell others. Number one, with the massive, massive influx of Muslims with the illegal Mexicans that are here. When you add those two to the new rule that they're putting in, which is if you've got a driver's license, you can vote. Then when you add to that the felons out of prison that now can vote, there is no way the average middle-class American, oh, there might be elections after November the 3rd, but they're not, that Russia and Cuba have elections. It's not going to be the same. We, Alex, the middle-class American, is not going to be relevant anymore. Not in the election process. It's over. And let me ask you this, Alex. Why would you vote in the next election for a Republican in the primary. You now know what you and I have been telling people for years and years and years, but now they can see it for themselves. You go vote in a Republican primary. Why? Because your vote don't count. The delegate is who's going to pick it, not your vote. And they're already introducing us to the, quote, new rules they have in place. And the mainstream media goes, of course we shouldn't count votes. Of course votes don't count. The parties, as George Will wrote in the Washington Post, <laughs> are the sovereigns. They're even calling themselves sovereigns, the new royalty. Maybe delegates, super delegates, will hand down royal baronies to their children. Absolutely. Now, there's one other thing achieved by that meeting with Janet Lynch, or whatever. Loretta. Loretta Lynch, I'm sorry. Another thing comes out of that. You see, 
Alex, everything's moving for the central government plan. It's all moving that away. And by them coming out now and doing what they're doing to put pressure on anybody protesting against Hillary, you know, if she's not indicted, any protest by using indictments and prosecution to shut the people's voice down, guess what they're doing? They're killing Donald Trump. They're doing this now, Alex, to put pressure on the RNC to take the nomination away from Donald Trump. Remember, he doesn't have that nomination yet. And relative to the rules, as you were talking, what is the rule for, you know, remember the 1237? That's bogus. We now That's know. right. And, and, and by the way, I said they were doing this all along. They admit they were playing possum. They're still saying they're going to try to steal it now uh, during during the convention. Absolutely. Remember, folks, if you doubt us, just remember this and forget everything else. That whole myth about the 1237, remember, there are no rules for the convention until six days before the convention when the executive rules committee meets. And that's when they'll decide what Trump has to do to get to be the nominee. And I'm telling you, Alex, you know it. You know it as well as I do, and you know the person I have on the inside that tells me the things that the RNC leadership's up to. They are planning every way they can to stop Trump from getting that nomination. Friday, I started telling you about 40-40-20. 40% that's in politics, that's the law. 40-40-20. 40% love Hillary. There's nothing she can do to make them not love her. 40% hate her. There's nothing she can do to make them like her. It's that 20% that the media calls undecided. I call them don't care. Now, Alex, think about it. They don't care. They're watching football, basketball, going out to bars, playing pool. The only time they care about politics is November the 3rd. You know what they'll do? They'll look at the polls, see who's leading, and they'll go vote for that person. That way they can brag that they voted for the winner. Everything Trump's going to do in this race, starting the day he gets the nomination, if he does, he's going to have to buy. You know, during the primary, Alex, Trump got all this free media. Well, he's going to get free media in the general election, sure enough, but it's all going to be bad. And if he wants to get to that 20 percent that will actually decide the outcome of this race, he's going to have to buy access to get to those folks and that's going to be a billion dollars that's right he just needs to he's going to be politically and culturally and, and just emblematically destroyed he's all in he better start spending his own money big time larry nichols in closing this is the reason i got you back on today really as you were getting into the polling a lot of their internal polling i know the trump campaign he's actually ahead three four five points some seven or eight or higher and, and that's in battleground states. He's dead heat in, in, in a lot of states, whether where she supposedly is on top. But they come out and say, she, you know, six, the, the Clinton News Network said she was six points ahead on Friday in a poll. And we know how they manipulate those. You got cut off when you said what that signified. Well, right now, when you see a poll, Alex, and they're showing Hillary 12 points ahead, don't believe it. It can't be that way. It's any poll that you see at this moment in time in the political race between Clinton and Trump. It'll be 40 plus or minus one or two points for Hillary, 40 plus or minus one or two points for Trump. But the reason, Alex, they're fluffing up Hillary's numbers in these bogus polls, again, is to try to get the RNC to say, hey, he hasn't got a chance. He can't possibly beat her and kick him out in that six-day meeting. That's what they're up to. This is all about eliminating Trump. Look, I don't know whether Trump would be a great president, a good president, a bad president. I don't know. But he certainly is outside of the system, and they don't want him. Absolutely. He hadn't played ball, and he's shown he's an anti-globalist. And I've been told right. by a lot of longtime patriots that are high-level uh, that, no, he's actually a closet info warrior, uh, not just Jerome yeah. Corsi, but so many others, and that's why they are scared to death. <clears throat> this, this signifies that uh, nationalism is rising and it's beautiful. Folks can uh, find uh, Larry at NicholsLive at AOL.com.
and can also support him there on the PayPal as he battles cancer. I didn't ask for that, but it's important to do. Nichols Live at AOL.com. Thank you so much, Larry Nichols. We'll talk to you again soon, my friend. Sounds great. Thanks, Alex.